Hello, and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today, I'll be showing you how to cycle from Shoreditch in the East End to Walthamstow in North East London. This ride takes about 35 minutes, and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. By public transport, the same trip would probably take around 40 minutes, so you can save time by getting on your bike. It's also a really nice ride with great infrastructure along the whole of the route. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the channel as I try to post new videos just like it every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to contribute as well, you can find the link in the description below the video. All right, let's get going. We're starting on Shoreditch High Street and we're going to immediately turn into Boundary Passage. As the blue sign at the entrances to this passage indicates, you're allowed to cycle here, although it's shared with pedestrians and quite narrow, so make sure you don't ride too fast and give them plenty of space. The reason we've gone through there is to get us into these back streets around Arnold Circus. These streets are part of the Bethnal Green Low Traffic Neighbourhood, which was introduced by Tower Hamlets Council a few years ago. These planters with the no motor vehicle signs on them act as filters which prevent cars from driving through these streets but allow us to walk and cycle through them no problem. As a result, all the streets around here between Hackney Road and Bethnal Green Road have no through traffic on them and they're a really, really nice environment for cycling. You'll see the odd car because access is still maintained for drivers if they need to get somewhere in the neighbourhood but there are no routes left for people just passing through. As a result, traffic levels are low enough that you could really cycle here with kids or anybody who wasn't an experienced cyclist. Tower Hamlets Council is actually currently consulting on whether to keep this measure. It's currently temporary. And I really hope they do, as it's made a massive difference creating a traffic-free route for all these people who are now able to make their journeys by bike. If you need a helpful way to remember which way to go, for this first section of our route, we're actually following a route called Cycleway 13, and you'll occasionally see signposts labelled C13 or Q13. You may recognise this street as Columbia Road, which is home to a big flower market on Sundays. The whole street is filled with stalls selling all types of flowers. As a result though, if you do need to cycle through this area on a Sunday, you will have to dismount as you can't cycle through the market, which is always very busy. The good thing about that is that the market is great and you can buy some flowers. If you look at the floor here, by the way, you'll see cobbles in the middle, but a smoother surface on either side of the cobbles. That's been done to make the street accessible as a cycle route without all the disadvantages of cobbles, but still being able to keep some of the old timey character. After we cross the road using that cycle crossing, we're then going to turn into Goldsmiths Row. This is a really interesting street because it's not just close to through traffic, it's actually closed at both ends, so it's completely car free. And it's interesting to see what happens when you do that. There are really, even in the middle of the day here, loads of people using it as a main cycleway. Unfortunately, the completely traffic free bit is quite short, although these streets that we're on now are part of a more conventional low traffic neighborhood. So there's no through traffic on them, just like we saw earlier in the video on that Arnold Circus scheme around Bethnal Green. One thing I think that this route does in this video is illustrate just how useful it is when multiple low traffic neighborhoods are next to each other. Instead of just being useful for local cycle trips, they start to join up and actually become a really useful network of traffic free or very low traffic routes. We're now heading into Broadway Market, which is a nice place to get some lunch on the weekend. But just as with Columbia Road Flower Market, this street is actually closed to cycles when the full market is in operation as it gets really busy and there are lots of stalls in the road. So if you're doing this on a weekend, you will have to walk your bike for this section. At the end here, you can normally cycle through the bollards, but unfortunately a van is blocking the entire street there. This path then leads us onto London Fields, which is a popular park in Hackney. This path is an interesting one. The left hand side is just for pedestrians and the right hand side is just for cycles. And because of the high number of cycles, actually, unusually, this is usually actually stuck to and it's pretty rare to see people wandering into the path. But that said, I would ride cautiously just in case a kid runs in the way or something like that 
and you should always be able to stop. And of course, if someone finds themselves on the wrong side of the path, just gently let them know and don't ride into them or anything like that. For the next section of this route through Hackney, we're going to be following a signposted route called Cycleway 27, which confusingly is sometimes signposted as Quiet Way 2, which is the old name, so it will sometimes say Q2. Just like the route we were following before, this is a quiet back street route running through low traffic neighbourhoods. Then for the final third of our route today, we're going to go on more main roads, but with protected cycle lanes running alongside them. So the whole journey is, I think, really, really good and you never have to deal with any cars. One slightly unique but good feature is this crossing of Mare Street here. It has this little protected area with a protective island for us to wait for a gap in the traffic as we cross Mare Street. After that, we're safely back on filtered streets again, but we're going to want to turn off left any second now. The most observant viewers of this video might have noticed that there was actually a break in the filming there, and that's because I shot today's route in two different outings. The reason I did that is because I originally filmed the first half of the video on a weekend, but then when I reviewed the footage, I thought it would be better to show you Broadway Market and Columbia Road Market without the crowds, so you could get a more representative idea of what they were like for most of the week. Apart from that, there isn't really any difference, but you might notice more parents with kids out in the second half of the video and more people on their way to work in the first half of the video. I think this is probably a good time to say that if you need to download a map of the route, you can always find one in all my videos in the description below the video on YouTube. And it's a link to a website called Commute where you can download the GPS GPX file and that should work on whatever app or device you choose to use. As we come to the end of this street, you'll see that there's another type of cycle crossing. This is a parallel zebra crossing, sometimes known as a tiger crossing. And while it gives you priority over cars going on the road, I would just be very careful when using any of those as not all drivers know that you have priority and not all of them will stop. It then puts us onto the Churchwell path, which is a shared use path with pedestrians. This is a little bit on the narrow side and it's really quite busy with both people walking and cycling and it's not really ideal at all. There is actually a proposal endorsed by Transport for London and Hackney Council to run protected cycle lanes along part of Mare Street and also to put a bus gate on Amherst Road and this would create a really high quality alternative route to squeezing people on bikes down past these trees with quite a lot of pedestrians. I think that scheme is part of the Hackney Central livable neighbourhood plan but unfortunately, as far as I know, it doesn't currently have any funding, so I really hope that that re-emerges. There's another parallel crossing here as well, and you should obviously pay the same attention as you did on the previous one. I know people like it when I include historical snippets in my videos, so one for here, Clapton Square. In 1905, future Russian leader Vladimir Lenin stayed at a house on Clapton Square. Clapton Passage here is a very attractive street which you're allowed to cycle through but it is narrow and shared with pedestrians so make sure you're courteous to anybody who's walking there. There's then another parallel crossing here and you can see that it's not just motorists who don't stop for them. Powerscroft Road here is a little bit too busy with traffic for my tastes. It looks fine now but at rush hour it can be a bit busy and there is still a bit of through traffic. However, that should change soon when Hackney brings in its Chatsworth Road low traffic neighbourhood over the next few years, which will remove through traffic from that street. For now though, we're actually going to turn off onto Almac Road and wiggle through a few other back streets, which will both cut a corner for us, but also give us slightly quieter riding conditions. This is probably a good time to say that if you really like what we're doing on the channel, you can always consider supporting us on Patreon. There's a link in the description below the video and I'd also like to say a massive thank you to everybody who's already signed up to that. It really motivates me to keep doing videos and also helps reimburse me for my time and cover my costs. I hope everyone's enjoying the improved video quality from the new camera. I've still got a bit of footage shot with the old camera so there'll be a few videos that aren't quite this sharp but we're pretty much solidly into 4K footage now so it's always going to look pretty good from now on. After a few videos with it, I think it's made a massive difference, especially on cloudy days like this, where the new camera is a lot better at picking up the subtle colours and shadows, and I no longer feel like I have to go out 
on a day with blazing sunshine in order to get good footage. There's a shared area with pedestrians here that's always pretty busy with people outside this cafe, so do ride courteously here and don't forget to obey the lights on the crossing as we cross into Millfields Park. This path would normally be traffic free, but you can see that there's a van here emptying the bins, which is fair enough, but you can see how it can actually get quite busy, especially with people walking, cycling, and if there's a contractor lorry as well, like there is today. This should be improved as a route when the Chatsworth Road low traffic neighbourhood comes in, as we would no longer have to ride down this shared path, and we'd be able to go on Chatsworth Road itself, which will no longer have through traffic on it, and will be a pleasant route in and of itself. Although the paths in this park are quite wide, I think that they can really get quite busy, particularly on sunny days, so that would be a big relief. And where possible, it's definitely best not to mix pedestrians and cycles, as it's not pleasant for really either party. I'd expect that new LTN to be implemented maybe within the next year or two, and when it's in, I'll certainly be showing you some routes that you can use it for. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you'd like to see those. Now we're entering the final third of the video and the next stretch here will largely be on protected cycle lanes. We first use this Toucan signalled crossing to get to the other side of Leebridge Road and we're going to turn right here onto this pedestrian and cycle bridge which runs over the River Lee. After the bridge we then join this great protected cycle lane which like a lot of cycle lanes in the London borough of Waltham Forest has this really attractive rust coloured surface. These kind of visual cues are really important I think, especially when a path like this is running next to a pavement as it lets people know which side is the pedestrian side and which side is the side for cycling on. As you can see you end up with fewer people wandering into the wrong side of the path. It's worth saying that these cycle lanes are what's called unidirectional or with flow cycle lanes. So when we're going in this direction we're on the left hand side of the road and when we're going in the other direction, we're on the other left-hand side of the road, or our right-hand side of the road. Occasionally, you can see people cycling down the cycle path on the other side of the street as well. You do occasionally see people cycling on the wrong side of the road in setups like this, and while that's annoying, if done cautiously, it can be understandable, as sometimes it can be difficult to cross the street on busier roads. I wouldn't recommend doing it for any extended period, and certainly not at rush hour when it's really busy, however. This junction that we're coming up to here is quite nicely done. I think it's what's called a cyclops junction, which means that all cycles and pedestrians get green at the same time. That means that if you need to turn right, you can simply do it in one movement by going straight on and then right. However, we're not doing that today. We're heading straight down Lee Bridge Road for a little bit longer. One little note about the traffic lights here, remember that if there's a light to the left of the cycle path, it means that you have to obey it. However, sometimes, including on this road, the cycle path will actually bypass the traffic lights, and in those cases, the light will just be to the left of the main carriageway and not the cycle path itself. One of those is up here, so that red light applies to those cars, but it doesn't apply to us cycling past there. The reason for it being done like that in that case is so that people approaching the junction on bikes can use the signalled crossing to get over the road if they need to. However, you should still be courteous to pedestrians if they're trying to cross the cycle path and just let them across. This narrowed section of cycle path here is, believe it or not, a bus stop. You can see the shelter and sign there. And you should always be aware of people trying to cross the narrowed cycle path to get on the bus. We've now turned left off Leebridge Road onto Markhouse Road, which has its own set of protected cycle lanes. The corner there for turning left was a bit of a bodge job, I think because of space constraints, and you're just expected to cycle over a small bit of shared pavement in order to turn left. You can see an issue here caused by a motorist not stopping behind the give way line. They've actually pulled out and blocked the pavement, and a guy there had to walk in the cycle path. These cycle tracks, which are a bit on the narrow side, were squeezed down a slightly narrow street, and there have definitely been some compromises in the design to make them fit. That's something I definitely appreciate about the design philosophy that the London Borough of Waltham Forest takes. That's where we are right now, and they do tend to try and squeeze tracks down as many roads as possible, where other boroughs might not necessarily do so. And while that can lead to some slightly narrower lanes than normal or other compromises, it does mean that they have probably the most comprehensive network of protected lanes that really any borough has in the city. 
at least in the south of the borough anyway, around Walthamstow and Leytonstone, things do get a little bit more sparse as you move north to Chingford. Now, in a second, we want to turn right down a road called Ringwood Road, and it's a little bit tricky sometimes to turn right off a protected cycle lane when it hasn't really been engineered in. So what we need to do is stop, wait for a gap in the traffic, signal to make sure everyone knows we're going, and then we can cross the road. There wasn't actually a dropped curb there and we went down the curb, although that isn't really a problem as if we were doing this route in the opposite direction, you'd of course be on the other side of the road and you wouldn't need to join that particular protected cycle track. For the very last section of this route, we're going to be on quieter residential streets just to weave us through right to the middle of Walthamstow High Street. These streets have been kept nice and quiet by things like this filter here, which prevents through traffic from going through. It's also been created into a nice little public space there with places to rest and sit and plants to add a bit of greenery and drainage, which I think really enhances the urban realm around there. There are other thoughtful things about this street as well. If you look on your left coming up in a second, you'll see a pair of electric vehicle charging points. And what I like to see is that they've been located on islands and build outs on the carriageway rather than taking up space on the pavement. At the end of this street, we go straight on using this drop curb to go into this path in a park. Um, it's a little bit narrow and quite busy, so be courteous and make sure you give pedestrians priority as you go through there. Now go left here, and then we're going to use this toucan crossing, which has cycle symbols on it, showing that you're allowed to use it, to cycle onto this slightly narrow protected cycle lane. And just coming up here is Walthamstow High Street which is our final destination and just where we want to go. So we've made it all the way from Shoreditch High Street to Walthamstow High Street and I think you'll agree that that was a really fantastic route. You can see from the map there that it's incredibly direct. We've really made very few compromises in terms of where we want to go and it's also just been a really pleasant ride with quiet streets and protected lanes the whole way. Also lots of really interesting things to see along the way. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next time. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit subscribe and also the bell icon just to make sure you're alerted when I post new ones. And if you really enjoyed it and you really like what we're doing on the channel, you could always consider contributing on the Patreon. There's a link in the description below the video. Let me know in the comments what you think and I'll see you again next time.